Next year they want to be in the top four in Asia. Forget about having a coach. They don't have an Indian under 15 or under 14 or under 16 team right now. There's no guarantee who's going to be the manager of our team. You're so big country and you don't have an, 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 a coach for over 23 because you don't look to any development at all. We have coaches from FIFA who are saying please send us the under 14 boys so we can prepare them for the under 16 AFC Cup. FIFA is paying for it. These guys can't even scout 100 boys from all over India and put them. We just want to have success and it cannot happen. What development, so whatever we are doing is just by luck. There has been no youth league for the last six years. That means not we have lost one generation. We have lost six generations of players. I don't care about a Vision 2047. I want to watch India play in the FIFA World Cup once before I die. I think everything which can go wrong is going wrong. There is no federation head, there is no leadership, there is no uh, support from the government, no support from the corporates, no support from the culture of fans. So when we talk about the planning, we have Vision 2047 in Indian football and I would like to, like previously Jeremy sir had told about it in a bit controversial way in the last discussion and that went on to being taken up by a lot of you know content creators and then they gave their reviews on it. But I would like to ask Zishan Bhai, like, I would like to start with Zishan Bhai and then we can get Ranjit sir, Steve sir's views also on it. Like, what do you think about the Vision 2047 planning? How is, how is it going to execute? See, it gives us a lot of hope. Uh, Vision 2047, that we'll do this, we'll do that. And not once in the whole Vision, the FIFA World Cup was mentioned. And I like that, you know, uh, the, the whole project was divided into a uh, few years, like first five years, what we have to do in the next four years, next five years, uh, what we have to do in the next upcoming 10 years. Uh, the basic, the, the most important thing was that we needed to focus upon our growth in terms of Asia. First, we needed to get in the top eight then in the top four. And it was also promised by the coach that in the next four or five years, we'll get where we want to be, like top eight of Asia or top four of Asia. And uh, there were promises of making star players and there were huge, huge, big uh, mentions of baits, I would like to call it like that. But yeah. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in what is written theoretically. I want to see actions. So there were a lot of things that were promised, the youth leagues, the, the uh, uh, for example, I would just like to mention the under 23 team coach, uh, Mahesh Gavli, he's, he was supposed to be taking care of that. But lately, we just found out through Kale Now reporters that instead of him managing the under-23 team, he would be going along with the senior men's team because both the under-23 team and the national team would be playing their games in March. So how is that going to work? There is an under-23 team and the <laughs> coach who was assigned to them, he's not going to be there. Uh, we talked about philosophies here. We talked about legacy here. We talked about identity here. We talked about, Tony told us about the culture that you know, uh, we, we don't have that. There's no guarantee who's going to be the manager of our team. So I would just give this as a very simple example. Look at Dutch football. The way the national team play, the style of play, it resonates down to every last bit of the team. Be it Krufism style or not, but they play the Dutch way. And... I'm not saying that in India, we need to play a certain style. I actually like the way in which we divide India in zones and we have a different identity. But there needs to be a guarantee. There needs to be a pathway that we can follow. And there needs to be threshold with milestones which, which we can cross and measure. This AFC Asian Cup was supposed to be a milestone. And the way we got out of it, the way we got thrashed out of it, it was really yeah. sad. And the, co and the coach was getting the blame. The players were getting the blame. Uh, Everything was separated. In India, we like to pick us apart when we are fallen rather than glue us together and build through that. Working together, what happened, happened. But there are again two games coming up. The World Cup qualifier are very important. And I don't care about a Vision 2047. I want to watch India play in the FIFA World Cup once before I die. And I believe most of the people over here in India want to, us to, to see that, you know, be there in the stadium. I got the opportunity to watch the FIFA World Cup final, Argentina versus France. I was there in the stadium. That was goosebumps for me. I, I, I was just thinking, if this is what I can feel watching Argentina play, what would I feel if I watch India play there? And I was there when India played the SAF Championship final against Kuwait. And they won it on penalties. And I was, I was crying. I was crying because that's what, you know, it makes you feel. Such a big nation without a lack of planning, it, it can't, it, it shouldn't go wrong. The next two games, I just want to talk about the upcoming fixtures. Afghanistan, we need to beat them. We get nine points. 
We beat in Kuwait in their own home ground. We get nine points in the upcoming two games against Qatar and Kuwait. If we manage to get another point, we are on 10 points. They are good for us to get into the next round of the World Cup qualifier. And if we get in that World Cup qualifier, we'll be playing good teams like South Korea. We can get teams like Japan and we'll get good Asian teams. And uh, Ranjit sir and other uh, uh, people over here were talking about competitive no. games. We yeah, need but those no. competitive games. But no, yes, but Risham, it is that I yeah, yeah. Totally really want you... And your words right now, which have come out of your mouth, which just come true, that we are able to get those 10 points. But what happens? What happens after we get those 10 points? We go and play Korea and then what? Yeah. We beat Mostly them? Out, of, out of the top, top of my head, we get thrashed. Yeah. We get thrashed. So now, because, but now that, see, yeah. don't you think the conversation should stop thinking about that? Let's hope that we get through our group. And it should now move on to let's hope we get through our group in the World Cup. Because there's time enough to do that. But we can only do that if, like you said, have quantifiable goals. Very beautiful Vision 2047. According to the Vision 2047, in 2027, for the World Cup for boys and girls under 17, India needs to qualify and merit. Again, coming that way, that means in 2026 in the AFC Cup, AFC Champions Cup, the Asia Cup, they need to be in the top four of the under 16s. But sorry, eh? sorry, eh? I'm and eh? I'm sitting now with the national team of Jordan. Yes, and and now I hear that you now I hear okay everything everything what you're saying now it's only about your first team. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And and, and, exactly. and, and you say there is no coach for under twenty three. You're so big country. And you don't have an, 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 a coach for under 23 because you don't look to any development at all. Bro, not only that, forget that. So they want to qualify for the under-17 World Cup on merit. Maybe. They don't have an under-15 team right now. Next year, they mm-hmm. want to be in the top four in Asia. Forget about having a coach. They don't have an Indian under-15 or under-14 or under-16 team right now. How the hell are they going to qualify for the under-17 World Cup in exactly. two years? So forget about yeah, the because, 20. Yeah, but then the scouting, you, you and, and that was what Steve was saying also, the scouting you don't have at all. There's, there is no there is no infrastructure at all from, from the Federation side. Exactly. And, so and, there is no, and base, I think there is no pyramid. Which, so exactly. We don't need to stop. We should stop talking about getting in this World Cup, getting to this right now senior team. No. Look at 10 years in advance. Invest in your 10, 9, 10, 11 year olds, ha- then maybe in 10 years you're doing it. Forget talking about one or two years in advance. I mean, they, it's not like you, like Steve was saying, you don't become a doctor in one year, Three you weeks, don't become yeah. a lawyer in one year. If you want to be the best in the world, it takes 10, 15 years of training. And that means you need to start at the age of eight, not eight. start at the age of 15, which we do in mm-hmm. India, because that's what we can do in cricket. Yes. But in football, if you start at 15, at 15, you have got people in Barcelona scoring for the national team and playing for Barcelona. Rajit, so the thing is, uh, in India, people measure our success through what our national team achieves. The success of the yeah, national sure, team keeps us, keeps us afloat. The, the, the development of the young coach. I'll just take a, a few minutes and talk about what Arsene Wenger told about the development of young players. It's, he said, and it's in a very sublime way, that the development of a young player is like a, like a making of a house. Firstly, you build their foundation. So when the guy is under eight, you... Let him let him have his football. Enjoy. Don't tell him about his strength or conditioning. Don't tell him about any kind of tactics. Don't tell him any anything that he won't care about. Firstly, he needs to just understand to love to play football. That is under eight. From eight to twelve, you improve his technical ability. You tell him about the touch. You tell him about a few things that he needs to understand. So Wenger went on to talk about the development of young players. And I don't know if there are coaches in India, if there are people in India who are working like this at the development of the players. We just want to have success and it cannot happen. I have I have been telling uh, this to a lot of people who have been watching our content that they want India to have success right now. I recently posted a video about the people, the, the players selected for the national team for this upcoming uh, games. Everyone want, everyone said, why the same team? So there are people the who, who do not understand that you can't go on and change the core of a team in every competition. You can't have, okay, 626 players didn't work in this game. Let's have different sets of players. It doesn't go like that. 
you need to have a, a solid core and then you need to give the chance to the players who deserve it but everything starts from the ground root the foundation if the kid if my kid at 8 doesn't know what football is if he doesn't know the rules he's not going to become a footballer at 18 it's very important that the that the young people the the kids get the right conditioning and it's not but happening the vision 2047 uh, can I stop you yes, there yes, for a second? Please. You're talking about eight-year-olds right now. And Mr. Bajaj and I will know that also, Jeremy, of having worked in India. Yeah. But an eight-year-old, where is he going to learn it except at Minerva, Schools. at United Sports Club, at Bangalore, at Goa? Mr. Bajaj, tell me if I'm forgetting a club, but I think it's about it. Three, that's, four, five clubs That's all. who are having under rates and all the rest there is nothing last Amazing. year 2023 there was a calendar made up by AIFF where yeah. there was a three month under 13 league three month under 15 league three month under 17 league and next year 2024 it's nine months sorry but we are in 2024 <laughs> already my under 13s have played exactly five matches. My under-15s, we were the first team in AIFF, the first team who had registered our 30 players, and still we have played zero matches. Our under-17s, we were the first team in AIFF who had registered, maybe but Mr. Bajaj, I'm not Please. sure, maybe you were no, the first one sec. Steve, but no, no, I no. Think... Steve, I'll tell you, even worse mm -hmm. than that, it's, it's not even this year. So I keep on saying, you know, we are very great because we won all the titles together. We won the under 13, 15, 18 in one year. Do you know we still hold those titles? And I won them in 2018, 19. That means I have not won titles every year. I hold those titles because for the last six years, there has been no youth league. Yeah. What development? So whatever we are doing is just by luck. That's okay? it. Not because That's of any planning. There has been no youth league for the last six years. That means not we have lost one generation. We have lost six generations of players. What does that mean? Each of those players have gone and played a game like cricket and got stuck yeah. there or hockey or whatever is available. They're not going to wait for football to restart. Yeah, exactly. And this is indeed where the problem lies that all those players, all the talks that we are doing, next month, uh, next year, 2024, there is supposed to be Nine months youth league. It's written in the AIFF calendar. We are still busy with the 2023 leagues. My under 17s, <laughs> because of what happened with East Bengal, I think everyone knows there has oh, yeah. been a process gone against East Bengal because of age cheating. Until yeah. today, until today, our club still doesn't know if we are playing in the final round or not because. There is no one who can tell us. Now, I've heard unofficially that on 29th of March, it starts in Goa, the final round of under-17. But we don't know if we're playing. We have no idea. So, oh. so our team has played seven matches, the full seven matches. I see Peter laughing. But, but yeah. this is the reality. So, Peter, this is Peter the reality. imagine you can, you know, imagine you can just... Switch off and uh, your webcam when this is over. Steve <laughs> still has a home to go to, to a different country, which has been world number one for fucking how many years. We have to actually live through this shit, okay? Yeah. And we are so helpless. You don't know how desperate and helpless we are because football is not rocket science. Because if it was rocket science, it would only be the ultra-rich countries getting through. We've got countries from having... Vote on countries like yeah. Palestine who are able to do better than us. No yeah, disrespect to them, but it's just that imagine there is not what we are doing right. The, I think all the discussion should be what we are doing wrong because I think everything which can go wrong is going wrong. There is no federation head. There is no leadership. There is no uh, support from the government, no support from the corporates, no support from the culture of fans. So we, it's the uphill battle. Then with this, with the fixing which comes in, and then you come in with all the kind of other age fraud problems you have. 
So we've got to get a house in order. And a house in order doesn't mean, unfortunately, Zisha, and I know it would, that somehow we're able to fix our senior team. Our senior team will not be fixed uh, until and unless our juniors are fixed. That means Absolutely. we should forget about the senior team. I know it hurts. But Ranjit sir, but not... that you and I know. See, you and I know. Yeah, well, but we, we are need what? Like a drop... Because then we'll just be disappointed. We yeah. are hoping for miracles from our boys. Exactly. We are putting undue pressure on my Indian boys to exactly. do so well against teams who have gone and brought up, brought up from football. So, like, whatever pass, for example, my uh, Sunil Chetri has made, my boys playing for Jordan have made 10,000 times at age yeah, exactly. of 22. And Sunil Chetri has done it at the age of 40. So, the number of hours have sure. already been put in by him by yes. the age of 21. That's what you and I know, Ranjit sir. Because, but, but the general yeah. people in India, they they want to get at our tails and they're going to ask, where is the success? There are people who comment and ask, why should we support you if you can't make us happy? And there have been people who who blatantly come and say that, no, we're not going to watch Indian football. I'm like, okay, we don't care about you people. We want to only care about the people who care about the development of Indian football, who have patience. For me, I... I Probably I haven't worked in youth development and coaching. There are people who know better than me. I believe the under-20 and the 23 teams are one of the most important fi fixtures in any in any uh, country's growth in football. In any developed that's country's where... growth. Bro, any yeah. developed country's growth, under-23 is very important. Why? Exactly. Because that is going to be your next senior team. Okay? Exactly. But in an underdeveloped country's growth, the most important team in your country is your under-12, under-13 team. You need to have a national team under 13. Did we have one 10 years no. ago? Yes, we did. Hima no, we did. We had Himanshu Jangra who was in the under 13 team. Why? Because there was some Asian tournament which happened and they had to collect a team. And then the team is made one month before and disbanded after that. Now, if those same boys had been kept for the last five years, imagine what kind of a batch you would have. Four of them have raced in the ISL. Yeah. But imagine if you had put a pressure on, I mean, thing, and they would have not been in the ISL, probably been playing in Europe. So we need to actually now stop talking about development and force our force our federation. We have the power to force them. To we have a FIFA Academy opening opened, yeah. lying in wait. We have coaches from FIFA who are saying, please send us the under fourteen boys so we can prepare them for the under sixteen AFC Cup. FIFA is paying for it. These guys can't even scout hundred boys from all over India and put them. They put 50 cent, 50 boys, all of them were sent home because they were not scouted. They were just sent because he's my son or he's my auntie's son or he's my uncle's son. <laughs> Where's this? Where's this academy? Where's this FIFA? It's, it's, the FIFA it's in Bhubaneswar. Bhubaneswar. So Bhubaneswar, Rudisa, they have sponsored the entire stadium and the academy. FIFA has sponsored the coaches. FIFA yeah, so, sponsored the coaches. So there's nothing so the Federation has to do except just give them the boys. They can't so, even Mr. Mr. Bajaj, yes, we, were, we were so lucky to be in the same under-17 group as yep. Sports Odisha. They were yes. in our group, fully, yes. fully funded by the state government of Odisha and who lost two times against the club who doesn't have any funding. Sports Odisha and Odisha FC lost two times with the under 17. And you and them. to us, and to us yes. as well. Exactly. So, so this is what I mean, and what you are saying exactly right. There is so much money going around, but they have not the knowledge in how to do it. We can talk about success with the senior team. That will not happen as long as the junior teams are not doing what they need to do, and that we can help them how it should be done by the talks that we are having here with all these people together.